All right, so in this lecture, it's finally time to look at how to create gaps or gutters in the CSS grid. And I'm not sure about you, but this is what has been annoying me most about this layout so far, is that we don't have any spacing between all the items. So let's do that right now. And actually for this and the coming lectures, I'm going to get rid of this because it adds quite a bit of overhead. And we don't really need this right now for this example. So now we're back to our basic grid that we had in the beginning. And now what I can use is grid row gap to specify the gap between each row in the grid. And let's say that should be 10 pixels. And now you can see we have this nice gutter here between the rows in the layout. And of course, equivalently, you can say grid column gap, let's say 20 pixels in order to add gutters between those elements as well. And I'm actually going to remove those and make them the same so that we have a nice consistent gap or gutter between each element. Now, if you're doing it like this, you can also again use the shortcut called simply grid gap. And that's going to be 10 pixels in this case because they're both the same. But of course, you can also specify different values by first defining the row gap and then the column gap. So here you can see that that's the order in which they're used. Now, what you can't do right now is have different gutters between the different rows so or columns. So what you can't do is say 10 pixels for the first and then 20 pixels for the second column. If you want to do that, you will have to create explicit uh, columns here in your specification, like let's say 20 pixels in between here, 10 pixels in between here. But I mean, most of the time, you probably want to have consistent gutters between each row and column. So this shouldn't be necessary most of the time. So you can just use grid gap to have a very quick and easy way again to create a grid with gutters. And I'm going to go back again to making these consistently 10 pixels. 